In this chapter, I shall tell you about creating primitives. Analyze the model you are trying to create and break it down into its simplest parts and each one of those parts can be a primitive. Let's create those primitives. Click on box and drag that out. So we have the length of that blade and drag upward to create the height. The same for the guard here. Click and drag. Release the mouse and drag upward to set the height. For the pommel here. Go to the cylinder button. Click and drag to set the radius. And drag upward. We also want a cylinder for the actual grip. And so that it's oriented correctly to begin with. We can create that actually in the left panel. Go over here to that left view. Click and drag to set the radius. And then release the mouse and move to set the height of that new cylinder. Now we just need to line everything up. Everything should have a Y value of 0 in the world. So that it is lined up exactly with this X axis or this line here. We want to go around to each one of these and with the move tool active. Set the Y value down here to 0. Now they are all lined up. Currently, everything is above the 0 line. It should be above and below the Z axis the sword blade here. I am going to set the height of that blade to be only 0.01 meters. For this cylinder, just select that and set its Z value to 0. It's now centered. And then we have got the guard here. I am going to give its height 0.05 Moving it down in a z-axis Negative 0.025 meters And now, it's centered We come to this other cylinder here I think that grip is a bit too tall We are going to set radius once again to a value of 0.015 meters. I will select that cylinder and set its height to double of what that radius was. And it should be 0.03. We can do things like move that cylinder around and increase its height. So we have got a bit more work to do. We have got some basic building blocks. Next, I shall tell you about working with Scene Explorer. Go into the Tools menu. And you will see Saved Scene Explorers. Click on Workspace Default. And the Scene Explorer opens. These are all of our objects. That is the image plane we created, and it's kind of grayed out. That means it's frozen, so we can't select it. The little light bulb icons here, indicate whether the object is visible or not, so if I click on that light bulb to turn it off, then I hide that plane. This other icon here, has to do with whether it's selected or not, so we can select the object, either by clicking on its name, or on this icon here. Go up into this customize menu, and choose configure columns. Get a little pop-up window here. 
we can choose all kinds of interesting things like the color. I will double click on color. And now you will see the object color. Scrolling down here. And you will see frozen. Double click on that too. I am going to close configure columns. And you can see plane 001 has a little icon of a snowflake that slid up. Meaning that the object is frozen. I can go ahead and unfreeze that plane. Now I can select it and move it. If you want to remove something that you have added, just go back into Customize. Configure Columns. Just drag it back over into the Configure Columns pop-up window. That's just really scratching the surface with the Scene Explorer. So that we know how to freeze and unfreeze objects, and hide and show objects at will. Next, I shall tell you about, working with the modifier stack. To illustrate the power of the modifier stack, we will bend and taper this card object here. I will go ahead and select it. And then go to the modify panel. And you will see, modifier list. When you click on that, you will see a long, long list of different modifiers or effects. Scroll down. And select taper. Now you will see in the modifier stack here, box at the bottom. And taper above it. I am going to press F3 just to go into wireframe mode. Let's select primary taper axis Y. And then change the amount. We will set it to a higher value near 1. I will hit Alt plus W and go out to all 4 views. We can turn on symmetry here. We can change the taper amount and make it negative to taper it down. I just want it to be affected in X. You can see in the top view that it's tapering towards the edges there. Next, I shall tell you about understanding dependencies. We have got a single modifier applied to the box for the guard of the sword. We also want to bend it. I will select the object once again. Click on the modifier list and choose bend. And now it's above the taper. Select bend axis Y. And now increase the bend angle. I can even go back down to the box. Increase its length here. And see how it's really gracefully adapting here. Let's maximize that top view. With Alt plus W. So now we can see it, clearly. Go back to the 4 viewport layout, with Alt plus W. And you can see, the little light bulb icons. Next to each one. You can turn them off. So you can see certain effects and not other effects. And that's this button, here. Show end result, is on by default. If I turn it off, then what I see, in my viewport corresponds, to the modifier. That I currently have selected. And anything below it, but anything above it, is not displayed. Finally if you need to delete a modifier, you just select it. And then click on the trash can. That will remove that modifier. So if you understand the concept of things, depending on other things, then you will have fewer issues with the modifier stack.